Hey everyone, so in this episode we're going to display a product to our customers and uh, because of uh, how orders relate to stock and product and all of that and how we separate it all out uh, you will see the trickery that we will have to go we'll have to undergo with Entity Framework but first of all let's fix an error I noticed when re-watching the last episode that uh, the I didn't get populated in here in the payment uh, CS file where we create the charge. So the charge order ID, just pass the ID. Unless you fix it. So now let's go into application layer. The process should be quite familiar. We create a get order.cs, create a constructor, application db context. Doo -doo -doo. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to grab an order. We want to include all of its order products. We want to include the stock and we want to include the product information in our order product. So sort of following that path, let's slowly build up our query. So um, we go into orders and let's first uh, let's uh, pass a reference so we're gonna work off a of the order reference so where uh, order reference is the same as the reference okay and now let's include include so make sure we uh, we're using uh, entity framework core uh, and uh, we want to include order stocks okay and then include stock all right if you don't get intellisense here don't worry about it just keep typing it it's a, a bit of a bug with intellisense because it's a list but you should be good if you just keep typing it and then again we want to include and here we want to go for product okay so at this point we have an order with the list of order stocks and uh, through that order stock we can get stock that we need and then that stock has the product information okay simple enough let's keep going uh, now that we have all of that let's tell the query what kind of object we want to select and we want to put this into our response okay and then we want to select first our default. Cool. So what kind of information can we put here? Let's go into our domain models and let's look at the order. Uh, we can pretty much take all of this information and we will cut out the stripe reference. Okay, and now let's make a public class. Uh, not product, uh, not stock, just rather product. If we go into products and get product let's get product rather to see what we can put in there and name description value yes that will be good for us uh public and i also want quantity in there for this for a single product and another thing i would like to know is so this description is the product description and this gonna, this is going to be the stock. I'm just going to name it stock. Actually, let's be specific. Stock description. Okay. So the stock description is just going to say what size it is or maybe what type it is. Because, you know, sometimes you can sell a sticker or you can sell t-shirts. And uh, sometimes you're not going to have like a definite size or whatnot. But yeah, let's keep moving. So... Let's quickly go into our create order. I'm pretty sure we can copy this to avoid a lot of the typing. Let's paste it in here. Uh, name of a stripe reference, create order reference, ex, uh, order reference, and request we can replace with an X. So, Bosch. Nice. Okay. 
uh, make sure we make a property here that is an IE numerable product. Cool, and let's name it products. Right. So products x dot order stocks. Okay. So we're going into our order stocks and um, from our order stocks we want to select a new product and let's replace the x with the y so we don't because we're already using the x in this uh, context but uh so for the product name <clears throat> name of the product we want to go into stock and product and name uh, let's put a comma copy this a few times same we want to do with description copy this put this here and the value same thing let's copy this a few more times uh, but now we're just going to be working with the stock and we want to be taking actually it's just going to be here that we're storing this so quantity if we go into the stock and this quantity this is uh, the quantity that we are um, that we have in our stock you know the one you like in your backyard in your box you have your t-shirts and that's the, the quantity that you have for your stock so uh, we want to use the quantity that is in the in the actual uh, order stock so use that and then want to go into stock for our uh, description okay cool when we get the product I just want to copy this method real quick and uh, to, to, to this here and let's copy this and let's replace the x value here so it looks nice and pretty Uh, and the stock description. Okay, cool. And um, let's add another property and let's call it pub uh, and not int value. Sorry, a string. I want to call it total value. And this is where I want to say. Put a comma here total value and here the total value we want to bring it out again from our order stock so order stocks uh sum and what we want to sum up is the not x but rather y again y stock product value and again we just want to call the same method here string cool looks good um uh, think return right nice and clean let's turn it into an expression you know i love expressions um yep that's that let's create a page uh, control shift a and razor page and uh, let's call it order cool there we go let's open the code behind and we're pretty much we always want to work off a reference here We want to bring out our new get order. So let's not forget to make a constructor and bring out our application db context. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, sorry, guys. Yeah, it should be self-explanatory what we're doing at, at this point. Um, we're binding a property. Uh, don't really need to bind a property because we're just going to be displaying some data. We call it. Can, we can call it for the model. You need to use bind property only if you're going to be submitting a form. So return page. Boom. Okay. What's it crying about? There is no argument. All right, no argument submitted. So reference. And you get order. All right, we're yeah, importing the wrong uh, one. So get order. We want the one from orders. Right. Cool. Uh, so page. Oh, we don't. We don't. We don't actually need to return the page. Here. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's do order here. Okay. Nice. So that should be bound. I'm not gonna work on uh, displaying all the information. Let's go just create a div and let's go into our model. Um, order and let's display the order reference. It's actually displayed in H1, so let's put it into here. And uh, let's just uh, create a for loop uh, for our products. So product in model dot order dot products and again let's just create a div and then here I will be happy with just product name and product description and product quantity and probably I will be happy with the only displaying all the information. But yeah, um, that should be alright. I think. Go on, let's let's fire this up. Whoa! Boom! Boom! boom. No inner payment. There is ambiguity. We have to get orders and we are okay. So I want to do the cart one. Okay, cool. Let's fire this up. Uh, one thing, okay, before we go, um, let's go into our order CSHTML and let's make sure we accept a reference. Double check that I spelled it correctly because I don't. Uh, okay, and let's actually go into our orders. Let's view some data, and let's grab this order here, and let's go to order. This here. Boom. Nice. So we get to see our order. Um, yeah, that's it for this episode, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, like, subscribe. I don't know who shares YouTube videos, but I, I, I don't, I usually don't share YouTube videos, but I guess, uh, if you really love this channel, you can share a video. Uh, other than that, hope you enjoy this, and I'll see you in the next episode.